Welcome to Tales from SYO Ranch, the bitch shoot channel where everyone is entitled to my opinion. And I'm Bill Stone. Well, I've got your attention. I'd like to ask that if you like what I'm doing, please like this video, subscribe to my channel, hit the notification bell, share me on social media, and tell all of your friends, family, neighbors, pets, and livestock to do the same. I'd appreciate your support via my PayPal tip jar, my subscribe star, my merch store on Teespring, or a place on my website where you can support me further. And there are links to all of these in my description box. On June 8, 2017, former FBI Director James Comey testified before the United States Senate Intelligence Committee. Now, I was watching that hearing, and at one point, I was utterly shocked by what I heard, and I was even more shocked by what didn't happen afterwards. So let me play the, relative, the relevant clip here. The president tweeted on Friday, after I got fired, that I better hope there's not tapes. I woke up in the middle of the night on Monday night because it didn't dawn on me originally, that there might be corroboration for our conversation. There might be a tape. And my judgment was I needed to get that out into the public square. And so I asked a friend of mine to share the content of the memo with a reporter. Didn't do it myself for a variety of reasons, but I asked him to because I thought that might prompt the appointment of a special counsel. And so I asked a close friend of mine to do it. And was that Mr. Wittes? No, uh -uh, no. Who was that? A good friend of mine who's a professor at Columbia Law School. Okay, now if you missed that, let me break it down to you here. James Comey, former director of the FBI, outright testified before the Senate that he had leaked notes that he had taken about meetings with President Trump to a friend who then leaked them to the press with the expressed hope that this would prompt the appointment of a special prosecutor. Now, these notes were, were taken while Comey was still director of the FBI. And these notes, by definition, were then property of the FBI. They were not Comey's private property. Anytime any FBI agent takes notes of any kind in the course of an investigation, those notes are automatically the property of the FBI. There are no exceptions for this. There certainly are no exceptions for the director of the FBI. Any notes taken by any FBI agent are automatically subject to any number of security layers. Now, I spent 40 years in IT, and I sometimes did government work. Now, just to go through the limited things that I did required a very thorough background check. And anything I did is still under a non-disclosure agreement. I can't talk about anything that I've ever done for the government. I won't be able to for the rest of my life. Now, when you get to be FDI director, not only is anything he writes subject to an enormous amount of security, it is a really enormous amount of security. No one sees the things that the FBI director sees, and he must, by definition, keep a lot of secrets. Yet he leaked notes that were at some level of top secret to the press, and he didn't even obfuscate it. He actually testified to the Senate about what he'd done. Now, I don't care what you think about President Trump. I don't care if you think that what went on for the last two years was justified. I personally am a libertarian, and I'm not a Trump supporter. But the former director of the FBI actually testified under oath that he leaked top-secret documents to the press. Let me say that once again. The former director of the FBI actually testified to the United States Senate that he had leaked top secret documents to the press. And he didn't even do any level of obfuscation. He came right out and said it because he knew he had nothing to fear. Now let me show you what should have happened and what would have happened if I, Senator William Stone, libertarian from South Dakota, had been present. The president tweeted on Friday, after I got fired, that I better hope there's not tapes. I woke up in the middle of the night on Monday night, because it didn't dawn on me originally, that there might be corroboration for our conversation. There might be a tape. And my judgment was I needed to get that out into the public square. And so I asked a friend of mine to share the content of the memo with a reporter. Didn't do it myself for a variety of reasons, but I asked him to because I thought that might prompt the appointment of a special counsel. And so I asked a close friend of mine to do it. And was that Mr. Wittes? 
No, uh, no. Who was that? A good friend of mine who's a professor at Columbia Law School. Director Comey, I cannot believe my ears. You, sir, have just testified that you leaked top secret documents to the public. Director Comey, you have left me with no recourse. James Bryan Comey, Jr., as both a citizen and senator of the great state of South Dakota, I place you under citizen's arrest. The charges are violation of the Espionage Act and a treason. You have the right to remain silent. Anything that you say can and will be used against you in a court of law. You have the right to an attorney and to have one present during questioning. If you so desire and cannot afford one, an attorney will be provided to you free of charge. Do you understand these rights as I have explained them to you? Do you wish to give up your right to remain silent? All right. Very well. Sergeant at Arms, I instruct you to guard Mr. Comey and have one of your personnel contact the U.S. Marshal Service. Mr. Comey is then to be taken into custody and placed in solitary confinement. Given his position within the FBI, he should, may, should he make any sounds or even hand gestures that might be signals to other spies, he is to be bound and gagged. Mr. Chairman, as Mr. Comey will no longer be president for testimony, I motion that this hearing be adjourned. That's what should have happened, but it didn't. The question really is, why? Now, your senators aren't fools. Most of them are attorneys. They knew that Comey had just testified to espionage. So why didn't any of them do what I should, w would have done at the set if I was there? Well, it's simple. They're deathly afraid of Comey. It's also why he just got off with a slap on the wrist when he should have been chucked into a side federal detention center and put in solitary confinement. Your elected officials are afraid of Comey. So why? Well, the answer is actually quite simple. At the federal level, all congressmen, senators, presidents, and judges are power-mad sociopathic narcissists by the textbook definition. Now, I don't make that charge hyperbolically. I mean it is literally true. In my description box, I have links for antisocial personality disorder, which is also known as sociopathy and also for narcissistic personality disorder. And I urge you to look up the symptoms. They will be so obvious that even someone with no training in psychology can see that they apply. At the federal level, all congressmen, senators, presidents, and judges are power-mad sociopathic narcissists by the textbook definition. Now, you don't get to be at that level of power without going through a lot of dirty tricks. You have a lot of skeletons in your closet and maybe a few dead bodies buried somewhere. There are no exceptions. Every congressman, every senator, every president, and every judge have skeletons in their closets and bodies buried somewhere. Now, James Comey is a spy. In fact, he's the spy. Even his secrets have secrets. And he knows where every one of your representatives' closets are and which skeletons are hanging in them. And he knows where all their bodies are buried. No one in government dare challenge Comey. If they did, all their dirty laundry would be aired. It would cost them their careers, their lives, their homes, their families, and it might even result in jail time. And that's why Comey was let off with a slap on the wrist. No one dare challenge him. It would be virtual death sentence. It might even be a real one. And this shouldn't come as a surprise. The FBI is not the nation's premier law enforcement agency. It is a den of corrupt spies. One look at the first director of the FBI, J. Edgar Hoover, provides all the proof that you need. The FBI has been corrupt from day one and will continue to be corrupt as long as it is allowed to exist. Well, it's time to end the FBI. Its existence is extremely dubious, as there's no language in the Constitution that authorizes this kind of domestic spying agency. 
I would urge you to contact your elected representatives and insist that the FBI be disbanded. It has always been corrupt and cannot be reformed. Being dissolved entirely is the only option. Of course, that'll never happen. If any of your representatives tried it, the FBI would simply destroy their lives with all the dirt that they have on them. And that's all I have to say about that. I'd love to keep the conversation going, so please leave your comments, questions, and nasty remarks, and I'll do my best to respond to you. So, thanks for watching. That's all the time that we have today for this episode of the highly acclaimed, world-renowned Tales from SYL Ranch, the BitChute channel where everyone is entitled to my opinion. And I'm Bill Stone. Ultimate power in this world has always been one simple thing, the control and manipulation of minds.